everyone, welcome to another episode of Girl Talk. This is your host, Andrea Patenia Matthew, and it's been a while since we did another episode for our Women Leaders Beyond Politics series. But for today, we are going to revive that because we are at the residence of a lady who might be the first female mayor of the city of Cebu. And for today, we will be getting to know her on a whole new level, a more personal one. We will be asking her questions about her life before politics, her dreams, her advocacies, her life as a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and her thoughts on women leadership. So all of these and more only here on Girl Talk. to introduce our guest to all of you ladies and gentlemen it's my honor to welcome former counselor margarita margot vargas osmeña hi mom margot hi andrea <laughs> thank you so much ma'am oh. for accepting our invitation to be a part of us our show and for accepting us into your lovely home oh my pleasure it's always my pleasure <laughs> i think mom it's been six years since i've last stepped foot in your house here in guadalupe um, at that time, I was a uh, I was covering the city hall meet, mm -hmm. and you were um, counselor back then. If I remember it correctly, you, you were handling the committee on budget and finance. That's right. Yes. That's right, Andrea. Yeah. That I was handling the committee on budget and finance. <laughs> yes, and I remember um, <laughs> Sir Tommy. He was the South District representative, so he would hold press conferences here at that time. Oh, that was about. Because Tommy was congressman from 2010 yes. to 2013. Yes, that's right. true. Oh, I remember that we would be seated in your dining area and yeah. then discuss a lot of the issues. This house is open to all. Yeah, it's a no. very open house. We don't, you know. Naan na mo, ma'am, since before, pano, your house yeah. is open to yeah. everyone. No problem. <laughs> How are you, ma'am? I'm good. I'm, thank you. I'm, um, I'm blessed. I'll put it that way because you know with everything that everyone has been going through our family remains blessed we are well mm. we are safe we are healthy and then you know um, we are grateful and we're happy because that's something I, I, I chose to do to be Andrea yeah I choose to be happy I choose to be contented Whatever I have, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah. of happiness, Mom Margot, um, some people would refer to their childhood days as one of the happiest days of their life. So can you tell us about your childhood? I did a, some research, Mom, and that I read an article written by Santino Bonachito of CBN oh, so back then. A long time ago, right? Yes, and then yeah. I found out that you're actually born in Japan. What brought your parents there at that time? My father... Um, finished his high school in Japan. Mm. I'm going to give you now a, a, um, an, on how old I am because, <laughs> because um, so he could speak and write Japanese. Ah. After World War II, okay, that's a very big hint on how old <laughs> I am. Um, of course, in the, uh, you know, in the rebuilding of Japan, they needed people who could speak and write mm. and could translate from English to Japanese and and the other and vice versa my papa was there for that because mm. he was asked to work there he was but very he young in the Philippines. oh yes yes yeah. he was there long for high school ah, okay. and uh it's, it's a long complicated process but he was there and um even if he was very young i think he was only 22 um because the that opportunity was open to him he took it mm. so he was there and also my born there. <laughs> my mommy followed and I was born there. Yeah. But I'm very I'm Filipina all yeah. the way through. No, all the way through. And I come from a family, a large family mm. of uh, eleven children. Wow, Ikapila Kama. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the ate. And not only that, uh, we grew up in a compound 
of my with my cousins and my uncles and my aunties and you know I we are 65 cousins first wow. cousins so, you so really I have a huge family yes and I I um it was a happy time really. yeah yes it's a happy time uh, because you know being with family and our best friends were our family. They also became our best enemies sometimes. <laughs> you, you know, you fight. But sure, in, the sure. end, in the end, family was, is family. Yes. And I am grateful again also for that because it gives, it gave me an anchor. Mm. You know, it, those are my roots. So it's very important for me, family. Growing up, Ma Margaret, what was your childhood dream back then? Did you ever envision yourself? being in politics. No! No, no way! What did you want to become? I There were many things I wanted to like become. What? Like Again, I'm going to reveal my age, no? but at that time, as, as a girl, yes, you know, yes. I wanted to be what they called then a stewardess, a ah, flight stewardess, really? now an yes. FA. Yes, yes. Well, I couldn't be because I was under height. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so height um, so so like, na, 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 na. So you're very beautiful. Na. I think, Even until you. now. Thank you. No, um then, then that's not my ano. I, I I will give that to my mom. Mm, <laughs> my genes. mom was a very pretty, very beautiful woman really? inside and out. And I was just fortunate enough mm. to have her. Anyway, um yeah, so I, I wanted to be an FA. Aside from that, what were the other Then things? at one time, after I finished college, I wanted to be, you know, that was a time when there were Vietnamese refugees who were accepted in the Philippines. And, see, you don't even know that. <laughs> I think I was a part of this. And then they were, they were all, they were brought to Palawan. Ah, okay. So I told my grand, my, my Lolo, I yeah. said, Lolo, I think I want to go to, I, I not I think, I want to go there and I want to see what I can do. Mm. And he looked at me like, are you crazy? Really? Yeah, are you crazy? So, um, maybe I'm not so proud of it, but I wasn't that bent. Parang whatever would enter my mind, that's what I want to be. Uh, so you were very random back then. <laughs> yeah, because before, me, yes, and then I started working even when I was in school. But my, what course did you take in college, no more? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, here I go again. Yeah. When it was time to decide on my major, right? because you, first you take, I think, the first two years of college, like liberal arts. Yeah. Then I had to decide, okay, what major do you want? Okay. I wanted something without math. Without math? Uh, without accounting, I'm sorry. Minimum math. Oh. And no thesis. Ah, See how ambitious <laughs> I was? I found it. What, what course is International that? International Studies. Ah. So I didn't have a single single unit of accounting. Would you believe and see where I end up? I know. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> minimum math and no thesis. So I graduated. Which school? Marinol College. Mm. Now Miriam. Mm. That's my only school. Ah. My, uh, from kindergarten to Fourth year college, I was in Marinol. And the, award the only medal I have is loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> and then, again, um, just about last month, together, of course, with my classmates, we celebrated our Golden Jubilee from wow. college. <laughs> from college, can you imagine? Oh my Lord. Tune, would you stand up and walk out on me? Oh, so yeah, I know your mind. <laughs> okay. So after after taking <laughs> international studies, you entered the banking industry. How did you? Um, no, okay. I when I was in school, uh, third year college, mm. I accompanied my best friend because she went to ABS. And she had to submit something, I don't know what. And then there were open auditions, so, you know, in the studios. And then she said, Manila. In Manila, yes, because I'm, I, yes. Was, I was raised in Manila. I said, she said, 
you you audition. So what do I audition for? I was say you go in there, you audition. Oh, I audition. Really? Andrea, I was accepted. For what? <laughs> <laughs> in ABS, what they call at that time a promo girl. In between programs, in between yeah, in between programs they would have like a promo girl to say, okay, we have just finished with the, uh, no, coming up next, ah. is that, so and so and so. So, para mo segue to do the other, yeah. other shows? Yes, and I was accepted. So, you did that? I did that. Oh. Because I had money. Oh, and then I was cute. able to pay for my own tuition. Yeah. And, um, yes, and it was, um, it was fun for me. In fact, the, uh, my director, I remember, always used to tell me, My God, can you stop smiling? <laughs> you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be a little, you know, supalada and sophisticated. Uh, but what can you do as an artist to give back for mga soap operas, commercials? I will have mga soap opera kami at two, di ba? But for commercials? I was. I had, I had a few. Hi. And then uh, I was also asked at one time to, Never mind, not wait. I want to to come okay, out in a movie, and I said no. A movie? You said no. Mm -hmm. So how did you become a banker after that? Mm, how did I become? I applied. Mm -hmm. I applied for. But you work. didn't want anything to. No, I. Uh, ano pa? I um. I I I worked pa in in a hotel. Ah, after graduation. The so hospitality industry. Sa um, I was in the front desk. Yeah, I was the youngest. Employee there <laughs> at what what was then the Intercontinental Hotel in Makati. Ah, okay. Yes, and then then I applied in a bank. Um, no, the, the the fact that I had no accounting was nothing really because you didn't need it in the in the in the position I applied for. Mm -hmm. There was one bank that I had. A, <laughs> here I go again. <laughs> there was one bank that I had applied for as teller. Yeah, it was downtown. But again, I was too short. They I did that like because minutes. before the tellers were like, tops were yes, <laughs> they were high, so you couldn't just have the head on top. Ah, on top. okay. So I was too short. Really? And then, then I applied another bag, but not as a teller, na. So I worked in the what we call then the money market department. Mm. It was really to get clients to invest. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, more like a marketing. Marketing. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so how you meet? Tommy, well, that's another story. Yeah, <laughs> I met Tommy first. The first time I ever met Tommy, we were in high school. Uh, we had a school fair, and then I had no ride home, so I asked my barcada. I said, Hilda, can can I hitch with you? Can you bring me home? Yeah. She said, I have to ask my boyfriend. Her boyfriend was Tommy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but are you still friends with Hilda? <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, no, she passed away about two weeks. Yes, oh, we were very good friends. Yes, yeah, she was a wonderful, wonderful person. And, um, no, it, oh, I did not, uh, no, no, wala, we did not go out. I just met yeah. him that first time. Ah. It was only after a time that we started going out. And when we started going out, I told him that, he had time going out with Tommy. Yeah, and, yeah. and she said, okay with it. <laughs> no. no. But no. how did you cross paths again? After that first encounter, yeah, that um, when his dad ran for president, okay. and then, oh, that was again way before you were born. <gasps> and then because I was friends with him, I was in this. Because I had out, ah. and then I yeah. So that's how you met. That's how we we connected. Uh, put it na lang that way. Then we started going out again, and then um we only we went out, we got together, and um. And then in 1971, La um, Semiranda happened. I, again, we were not yet bored. <laughs> the following year, he had to accompany his, his parents to the States because his dad was the one of the most um, seriously injured in that bombing incident mm. in Plaza Miranda. And he told me at that time, you know, I'm, I'll be away three weeks. He never, he did not come back because Marsha Law was declared. Ah. So I didn't see him for eight years. But you weren't together officially at the time, or LDR mo ako, ma'am? So LDR. LDR, long distance relationship. Yeah, don't even know. <laughs> it's a yes. long term. No, we were, we were together when he left, but mm -hmm. 
you know, there was no ano for LDR at that time. You don't even have, there's no text, there's no email, there's no, the really? only thing you have. Siyempre, at that Pero, time. How do you keep the relationship? Very expensive. Through um, letters. Yeah, which is the snail mail. Yeah. And then also, you, if you want to call on the, you could call, but it was terribly expensive. And it's like, Operator, <laughs> you have to make appointment for yeah. that, and then of course it's the telex. You, hi Tommy, stop. How are you? Stop. You like that, ba? No. Ah. Uh, but you still managed to we keep the relationship we, alive despite the distance. We kept it alive, but let me tell. You, but he had his own. He also had his own life there. I had also my life here. I when he left, I was. I just finished school, mm -hmm. but I then I started on my own career path. You mm -hmm. know, but there was we were in touch. Put it along that mm -hmm. way. Okay. But I like to twist and turns. But I always say, you know, I, I grew up. I grew up at the expense of others. <laughs> And so when that time came and we were able to see each other again in because the was or here. in the U.S., he could not come home mm -hmm. because of politics. Um, uh, it was like nothing, those eight years. Really? Yeah. You didn't have Yes, yes. Thank you so for, for sharing the oh, part yeah. of your life with us, Ma Margaret. When we return, we will be talking about how Ma Margaret started her political career as counselor of the city of Cebu. So please don't go away. Girls, I'll be right back. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are still with former city councilor Margaret Asmenia and she already shared with us a uh, history of her life, her childhood, growing up, her career. This time, let's ask Ma Margot, when did you start um, entering into politics? By the time that um, Sir Tommy was mayor of Cebu, at that time, Ma Margot, did it ever cross your mind to join him? You mean join in an official position? Yes. Okay. Um, when Tommy entered politics, that was 1988 when he first became mayor. First of all, I'm Tommy's wife. You know, and I'm very proud to be his wife. And um, I, I never thought of myself, like when he did become mayor, as the wife of the mayor or the wife of the congressman when yeah. he became congressman. But I'm Tommy's wife. Whatever he is, I'm Tommy's wife. Mm -hmm. If he were something else, I'm still his wife. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, entering politics on my own came only in 20. 10, yeah. when he could not run anymore for for of uh, for mayor yes, for mayor. mayor and um at that time maybe the parangay uh, officials were so used to having him that they maybe i'm seen as an extension i don't know <laughs> but i did get a petition from the uh, barangay captain 60 of them out of 80 that they wanted me to run after Tommy could not run anymore. Uh, obviously, I did not run for mayor because that was, I never, it never entered my mind in the first place. And also, Tommy had promised that to my grandma. And Tommy keeps his promises. Okay? And, um, but then because um, there was a little, I, I don't like to know because but to settle things down na lang, mm. I told Tommy one morning and he was so surprised he said, I said okay okay I'm gonna run and he said what I said so it Lord. first came from you yes I said as counselor so that at least I'm there mm. diba? Mm -mm. so that's what happened mm. but how old was Miguel at that time when you already ran for, for counselor I is old enough na uh. he graduated na from college yeah. But when Mayor when Sir Tommy was mayor at that plus, time. Late, late 20s, yeah. What kept you busy, Ma Marta? Many things. Uh when when remember uh Andrea, I'm not from I was originally not from Cebu. I could not even speak or understand what people were telling me, but I mm. went out there because I generally like people. And um anyway when Tommy was able to 
to sit as mayor the first time, he was the one who told me, he said, you know, my God, many people will ask you to share with them their causes, all of which are very worthy, mm -hmm. but I'm asking you to concentrate only on one. Tommy's very focused, as you know, no? And he said, just work with the children. I didn't even know what he really meant, you know? But that's what I did. And that's why, yes, I got focused on them, and I still am focused on them. It's been 34 years. Parian. Not only Parian, but the Cebu City Task Force on Street Children. Parian is only one of the agencies. Mm -hmm. And I was, again, fortunate that um, when I decided to go into that path of helping the children, where do I start? Hindi ba? They cannot even understand me. Mm -hmm. What do I do? What is needed? I found out that there was already a Cebu City Task Force on Street Children. Mm -hmm. So I asked them if I could join them. And I went in there not telling people what to do. And, and in retrospect, I do know that some of them were even suspect of my intentions because this, the wife of the mayor, I'm a basi mag picture picture lang na ba? Mm -mm, mm -mm. But I eventually, I think we were able to understand each other and um, it was through them, the members, that I asked what, what can I do mm -hmm. and then what is needed that I can do and that is how it happened that we, we established Parian because there was no, what the what we call a drop-in center, meaning anybody can just bring a child there. Let's say you're, concer you're a concerned resident and you yeah. see a child in the street and you want to help, but you can't bring them home, right? Mm -hmm. So you can bring them to Parian. That's why it's a drop-in center. We're the ones who process them. And right Over now. the years, now, Mark, that the working um, with this advocacy, what do you think for in Cebu and specifically Mamba, what do you think is the root cause of juvenile delinquency in our city? If I could answer you, do we have solution already? <laughs> you know, it changes. You cannot say even poverty because it's so easy to say poverty. No, because we have seen children coming from extreme poverty mm -hmm. and become productive. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have seen children who come from extreme wealth. Mm -hmm and who have become what you term as juvenile delinquents. I think it's the roots that you have to put there. It's values. Values for me. Values for me. But again, it's so easy to say that yeah. because how can you think of values when you can't even, don't eat. even have anything to eat? See, these are the things that I've learned in 34 years. Admittedly, I was quite judgmental in the beginning. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. But then I realized, I realize, and there's one thing that I also, maybe it was something that was taught to me, mm -hmm. that the bond between a mother and a child is almost unbreakable. No matter what the child goes through. Yeah. Now that you brought that up, Mama Margaret, how are you as a mom? Are you the, the, the strict mom? No. Are you the cool mom? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I, I, but. I, I think it's not a good thing to ask me but ask my son. I only I only have one son. I mean I only have one one child. Mm. I'm no longer a child. So um it's like this. We have always given him the respect as a member of the family. From the very start, like when I entered his room, I would always knock, even if he's five years old. Oh really? Yeah. Because I, I wanted to show him that this is his but I will knock. You know, um, yeah, respect. Mm -hmm. That he is not my extension. He is not Tommy's extension. Mm -hmm. He's his own person. And it is our responsibility and obligation to make him grow into the best that he can be. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm not perfect. No? But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think, no, I'm not strict in that sense. But Miguel never, did, did it cross his mind to run for um, maybe it has position. maybe it has but it's not his um again it doesn't drive him mm -hmm. so well, as we also did not we also did not make him grow up like 
you know, when you're, you're like fighting cock, you know, okay, one day, yeah, never, yeah, never. Yeah. He was very exposed, of course he's exposed to the light that his papa has chosen, mm. and that I have also been, I'm also in it, but we have never said that one day you're going to do this, you're going to be this, and do that. He would, uh, let me tell you, okay. One time he came home from school, he was about five or six, he says, mm. I'm the little Nato. I said, what? Who told you that? His classmates. No, his teacher. teacher. So I said, why did Papa become mayor? Why is Papa mayor? Then he said, because people voted for him because I taught him that. <laughs> and then I said, did anybody vote for you? And he said, no. I said, well, you're not the mayor. Then I really went to the school. And I asked him to please do not put that in his head. Yeah. Right? Because then True. they grow up Entitled. Entitled. Feeling that is a title that you pass on. True. So hopefully we have been able to avoid that. Mm -hmm. That if ever he has to earn it. Fast forward ma'am to your um, first term as city councillor. How was it like for you? At same first time. <laughs> <laughs> I kept quiet for the first few months, I think, because even if I did maybe, maybe I was the oldest there. <laughs> but I wanted to observe. Even, mm. even if I'm the oldest, does that mean that I know? Even if at one, I mean, people would see me as the wife of the former mayor okay. because he was not the mayor at that time. It doesn't mean I know. I have to learn. Mm. And that's one thing, Andrea, that I am again maybe grateful for that even in my advanced years, as to, I was really, I, I, I could learn. Yeah, and I, I don't have to learn it from somebody. I can learn it even from the, I remember the SK chair at that time. I was so impressed with her because she was, what, 20 years old? Yeah. And then when she would discuss in the council, I said, you know. Kama Osha. Kama you know what she's talking about. Yes, yes. And like, you know, we, we always have to keep in mind that we do not have the monopoly of knowledge. Oh, no, and, and no, not at other. all. And, you know, if you're good in one thing, it doesn't mean you're good in all, right? Everybody has their role to play. But was it difficult handling the city's budget? I had to learn. Remember, I never took accounting. Yeah, so... So when it was <laughs> handed to me, in fact, it was Joey Dalus who told me, it's your time. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know how to do this. He said, no, you will learn, you will learn. So, I learned. And then, when I didn't know, you ask. It is not a. It is not something that you should hide and if you don't know. Because how will you ever learn if you don't ask? And I made sure that I asked the right people. Like I, I would go to DBM ah. and ask, how do I handle this? And then after a few years, looking at the city's budget, I looked forward to it because it was like a story. It's a picture of how the city is right mm -hmm. it's a picture of, yeah yeah and how you can use the resources of the city to give the services see and yeah it, it became quite interesting and then then you know as you do it and you go on and on you already know where to look mm -hmm. so when you looking you, for something yeah. what made you want to run for like another two turns again after the first one i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the people I was with, you know, since I was there already, since I was there already, might continue. So until, yeah. What would you say was your greatest takeaway during your three terms, ma'am, as councillor of city? On my, what, yes, what, what, what is, like, um, I mean, what, what, what were your greatest learnings? Uh, again, that I can learn. I am so grateful for that because you know sometimes you reach a certain age and you go, ah, what? I can still learn pala. I can still absorb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Learning never stops. Learning never, never stops as long as you're willing to learn. Right? You were up in mayor for several times. Six weeks? No, one time only. One, uh, one time, time only. Six weeks. Six because weeks. Everybody, almost everybody was suspended. How did that feel like, ma'am? What was the experience like? I, I used to joke, I'm acting mayor, mayor, mayor doma. <laughs> mayor doma lang ko, yung transition lang na. I mean, you know, like, it was, um, 
the former administration going into the new administration, which at that time was going to be headed by Tommy, mm -hmm. yung parang, let's clean what we can clean. Like that pa. Let's do what we can do so, so that to make it easier for the next administration to take over. I never saw it as a... Uh, Wow, I'm the mayor. No. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> voted for me as mayor. <laughs> they may have voted for me as councillor, but no one voted for me as mayor. So it was the same thing you told Miguel when he came home from Canada. <laughs> yeah. In terms of challenges, Ma Margaret, greatest challenge when you were um, city councillor, say Montoluca terms. What was the most difficult part of it? Patience. And also, uh, I did have one challenge that was there the whole time that that I would get so consumed with, you know. No, I, I think it, it adjusted, depends on the time, depends on what was, what was the issue at that time. But um, to take what I was doing seriously, that this was just not counselor. You know, kagalanggala and all of that. But if I had, if I had made a vow, I would do that. I would take it seriously. Uh, again with help. And always, always with a prayer. <laughs> you know, always with a prayer. When we come back, um, atong kamustahan si Ma'am Margot, Kung what's say mga ganap si ang life after her three terms as counselor? What kept her busy over the pandemic and <laughs> towards the these past few days when she decided to run <laughs> for the highest position in the city of Cebu? All these when we come back here on Girl Talk. You are still watching Girl Talk and of course you're still joined by former counselor Margot Osmenia. And this time I'd like to ask the question of Margot. During the pandemic, <laughs> everyone, almost everyone, developed a hobby. They became plantitas, they were into baking, um, bartering. What kept you busy? Well, I have to admit, I'm not a plantita. <laughs> I have no talent in cooking. Because maybe because my husband does and he mm. likes to cook, so why will I cook? You know? Why will I compete? Um, like many others, we decluttered, but I should declutter some more, <laughs> you know. But m maybe the best part of it was that I was with my small family. Mm. That we, hey, it's not a bad idea, it's not boring for to be at home. Then I have a seven year old granddaughter who developed in great strides during the past year and a half. Mm. And so just being witness to that, you know, and, and having her close to us. So, and adjusting, adjusting also, and uh, knowing that we are blessed, that my family is blessed, um, we are safe, we are sound, we are healthy, mm. and whatever is needed, we have the, the blessings to be able to take care um, not only of ourselves, but for the people around us, and maybe even for those who need help. Mm -hmm. You know, it is really a privilege to be able to do that. Yeah. That I don't have to wake up in the morning and say, where am I going to get our food? You know? Um, yeah. um, what has happened? Maybe it's a realization mm -hmm. that life is, God has been very good to us. Mm -hmm. did, did it happen to you na were there times na murag na praning ka in terms of kanang virus? Yes. No, no. The cabin fever. They call cabin fever. You know, oh, I would tell Miguel and Bea, my daughter, you know, what? You know, you, parang you, 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 you feel it coming in, mm. going in, going in, mm -hmm. going in. But it didn't last very long. Mm. I, I'm ano naman eh. I don't dwell nga on my, ano eh, on my, want to call them insecurities or whatever. I don't dwell on that. I always find something to do. Mm. If or something to think of. Or pray. Pray. Did you watch any ano ma'am? Mga Netflix shows, yes, K dramas. <laughs> I watch Netflix shows but I'm not into K dramas the way other people are. I watched a few. 
like what, ma'am? Um, that one, yeah, that, uh, what's that? That landed? Uh, Crash landing on you. Yes, yes, yes. I don't even know the name. I've seen that. Landed. <laughs> and I, I only watched that because, because I watched it. I did, it, it was not even the hit it was. At that time. Know, at that time. And then I got into others. And then, but there's some, you know, I, my, my, my Netflix menu yeah. is very, very, it's like, halo halo ma. <laughs> it's, I, I watch. I, I watch cooking shows and I don't cook, okay? I watch documentaries. I watch, um, you know, series, series, mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. and I'm watching eight at the same time. I go from one to the next, from one to the next, one to, even, I watch Tagalog there also. Ah. Yeah, you know, so, um, basta, like, <laughs> I, I don't like morbid. Mm. I don't like the after, I, I don't look forward to after watching on Netflix that I feel down and depressed and go. Mm. So you like feel good mo movies? Babaw. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, because life is really serious. So I will like go out of my way to, to, to make my, you know. That's how my husband is like, Ma Margot. Mm. He, he likes to watch movies that he would enjoy. Yeah, he you're, you're smiling. Na after, na, yeah. Na nung namatay man to oh, siya. Or, may tabu. Yeah. Oh, kid, why did he kill? I don't like like that. No. So, yeah, I watch Netflix. You know, you could stay on YouTube the whole day, the whole night. No? But again, it's just, you know, you know. But again, but also, all throughout, the, um, the commitments I made, Continue. Mm. Pag Ian is there, mm. I had to make sure that the children were very safe. Mm -hmm. And thank God none of them got in the, you know, no. had, the, had the COVID. Unlike the other ones in, in Lapu-Lapu. Yeah. Because we became back. very strict from the start. Mm -hmm. And then Kapwa Po Mahal Po, um, which I've been with for forever also, our focus is on children with cancer. Mm -hmm. And, well, we, we again, giving credit where it's due. Our staff, I have a, we have a staff of four. We have the same staff of four for 20 years. They're able to deliver, you know, the medicines to the children with cancer. And some of them are not even from Cebu. Despite the strict border yeah, They control. found ways through the, through the Coast Guard, through the, I don't know, but yeah. they found ways. And none of the children missed a chemotherapy session. Nice Even know. at the height of so things like that, and then um, two years ago, I I joined the Philippine Red Cross and the chapter. Mm. So also on that. So those are commitments. Those are not positions held, mm. and I will keep my commitments. Mm. So, but for this new position that you are <laughs> buying for, Mom Margot, how did you come up with uh, this? Major decision in your life? Maybe it's time. I, I don't, again, I never had any political plans or ambitions because if I did, if I did Andrea, why will I do it now? I'm in my, se okay, I will admit I'm in my 70s, you know? I'll do it now. It just fell into place. I, without going into the details because that's so, so political, you know? Yeah. But it fell into place. Was it a difficult decision? Extremely. It still is. But I made a decision and I will abide by it and I will go forward on this path. I will do it without any hesitation because I decide. Mm. You know, and I know I have the full support, number one, of my family and the people around us in the BOPK family. And again, always with a prayer. Well, Margaret, I'd like to ask about your thoughts on what you think about um, the major developments that's happening in our country right now, wherein women are already to be seeking a for major positions in government. Like president? President. Vice mayor. Is there a vice president? Wala, um, wala, wala, wala. President ang na mayors. Even here in Cebu. How, how it's time. Think? Like I said, it's time. Things are falling into place. And if I, I read at one point that, um, you know, COVID has affected, it hasn't chosen where to be, right? And in the countries affected by COVID, 
those who showed the most progress in fighting it mm. were headed by women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But based, based on your experiences, ma'am, or your observances on, I'd say, mong experience sa pag in politics, have there been double standards in terms of treatment um, yeah. of women versus men who are uh, holding government positions? I have not experienced that. Maybe I'm lucky, but I have never experienced that. And I would like to say one thing, um, Andrea, that you know, politics does not define me, nor even my, especially my husband. Hopefully, who we are is what we bring into the politics that we practice. Mm -hmm. It is not, we have a life outside politics, but we choose to be there. And once you choose, you stand by your choice. You cannot say, you know, as an elected politician, you go to the people. You go out of your way before pre-pandemic. Early, early in the morning, you go there, shake their hands, wake them up, shake their hands, talk to them again at night. You know, and you ask them one favor to vote for you, right? Mm -hmm. So if they give you that favor and they vote for you and you're in the position you applied for, then don't complain. That position is not only so that you can be called kagalang galang or you have the power and authority. There are times when really it really gets you know <laughs> challenging yeah. to put it that way. But that's all part of it. Don't complain because you ask me. I have one last question for you, Ma Margaret, before we yeah, sure. proceed <laughs> to our ten fast talk, ten question segment. Um Recently, in the Miss World, uh, in the Miss World Philippines, uh, the question of Secretary Hagerofe was quite. How uh, about to be a budget? <laughs> it was quite controversial. <laughs> many yeah, women or many online um, users reacted negatively towards it because he asked the candidate what she would tell a woman who was running for the position of president even if her kids were still very small and um, oh, yeah yes yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. because it, it was as if he was implying that being a good mom and being a good leader is exactly. equally yes. exclusive yes what are your thoughts on that well her, coming from harry roque <laughs> it doesn't matter what you i mean even the question alone you know my thoughts on that is up to i mean you're the one who knows what you're capable of right mm. um I may have been, I didn't run for anything, a budget or what, but there were times I was away from the house, more than I should have maybe. And I had a son who was young. When Tommy was first mayor, Miguel was only three years old. Three years old. Mm -hmm. So, am I guilty? Maybe, in a way. But do I have any regrets? No. No. Because I explained to him, and uh, again, it's up to the individual. And I will not judge others. Sure. That's coming from Harry Potter. <laughs> I would even answer that. And his reaction for good after the I, I know. saw his I know. He, he laughed. laughed. He laughed. I know. That's a nervous laugh. I know. <laughs> Ma, oh no, you have the ten questions. So <laughs> we go. Have ten random questions as if those weren't random enough. <laughs> yeah. But this one is um very short answers like Mom Margaret. Anything that pops into your mind. Okay. okay. So we have 10 questions for you. What is your first question is what's your favorite color? Red. What do you do when you're stressed? Gray. Who's your fashion icon? So ask about the style because I, if I may point out, Mama, during the city session, city hall sessions, <laughs> I always look forward to your outfits. Honestly. <laughs> no, because matching matching by Oh. Uh, well, not, not, not really. Imoha lang own preference oh. mm. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> now that you're more um, comfortable with the Bisaya language, what's your favorite Bisaya word? I don't know. I'm more comfortable, but kulang pagyapon. Kulang pa sa practice? Yeah, I still you need. <laughs> Maybe nani. Nani. You know why? Why? Because in the first elect, the first uh, campaign of Tommy, 
somebody told me, they're calling you Naning. I had no idea. I thought it was a name. <laughs> so I said, why? Who is Naning? You. I said, why? What does that mean? Naning Kamot. Uh, trying hard. I said, what's the problem? What's so what's the problem wrong about with trying it? hard? So I would introduce myself. Ako si Nani. <laughs> you, you owned it. I owned it because I was really trying hard. Ito. And up to now, I'm still trying hard sometimes. You know? It's it's uh, not so hard because I'm tabian, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm talkative. I've always been talkative. And so, since I'm talkative, I want to be able to talk to people. And I don't expect the Cebuanos to adjust to me. I, I live in Cebu. Even, that was how I thought even then. I live in Cebu. I will adjust. And I think also, Mom, it's about time that we did not put a negative connotation to the word nanning. What's wrong with doing your best? I think it was only them. I, I don't think there's a negative oh, yeah. on them. So, so, so we'll see. Oh. Next question, Mom Margot. What's your favorite cuisine? What my husband cooks. Ah, so anything. But what's not your specialty? All. <laughs> not all. Not because I don't eat liver. I don't eat things like that. But ah. but he cooks that and I don't eat that. What's your specialty, ni, Sir Tom? Tommy? Not much special things. He can, you know, it's very good because he can just look there and see even the leftovers. He will make it into something really good. It's yummy. It's very malasa. I'll put it in the garden. Savory. Very. Oh. One woman you've always admired? My mom. Mm -hmm. Greatest problem in Cebu City that needs to be addressed, Asa? Good housekeeping. Clean the house. Who is the more disciplinarian parent? Is it you or Sir Tom? Depends. Uh, depends on the situation. We're kind of balance each other. Yeah. Would you rather have coffee or tea? Coffee. Most important thing that motherhood has taught you? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a gift. Thank you, Kayo. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mom. Thank Morgan. you also. Is there anything that you'd like to say? Well, to would you like to have lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I just want to thank everybody. Thank you for coming and giving me this opportunity. Of, and for the people of Cebu City, thank you. Thank you for being here. Nagan kaayong salamat. Again, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, Kaayo, for accepting us into oh, your course. humble abode. Of course. And of course, to all of our viewers, thank you so much for watching. This has been Andrea Patanya Matthew for Girl Talk.